Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, February 21st, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today wrote up a new interesting info stealer written in Python. One of the problems malware always is trying to cope with is that sometimes, well, a malware is examined by researchers like Xavier and they try to prevent researchers from running the malware inside a sandbox. These sandbox are often virtual machines, so detecting sandboxes often comes down to detecting if the system is running inside a virtual machine. The tricky part here is that researchers, of course, sometimes try to evade these detections by modifying what values their virtual machines return for things like MAC address or such that are often being used. The trick that's being deployed by this latest InfoStealer malware that Xavier ran into is that they keep a list of these indicators online on a website called rentry.co. It's sort of a paste bin like website. And then the malware will check specific URLs on the website for the latest and greatest list of indicators. Sort of a very typical signature update approach. This particular list that uh, Xavier ran into was last updated on January 27th. Doesn't appear to be actively used at this point because this rentry.co website also nicely offers a view counter telling you how often a particular file has been downloaded. And I think the lesson here to any researchers that are using virtual machines is number one, and that shouldn't be new, that attackers are trying to recognize them. And number two, try to stay flexible, adjust your settings ever so often to evade these different evasion techniques. And if you're using ConnectWise's Screen Connect in order to a remote access desktops, well, it's time for you to update, in particular if you're running the on-premise version of the software. Cloud-based uh, instances are already being taken care of by ConnectWise, but on-premise, you have to update it to fix uh, two vulnerabilities, one with a CFSS score of 10, and that's an authentication bypass using an alternate path or channel. The second vulnerability, CSS score of 8.4, is a path traversal vulnerability. Updates are available and the vulnerability was originally reported about a week ago, does not appear to be exploited at this point in time. Sadly, I don't see any CVE numbers in the advisory. And VMware today reiterated guidance to remove the deprecated VMware enhanced authentication plugin. This particular plugin was officially deprecated about two years ago. There are two unpatched vulnerabilities. There will not be a patch for these vulnerabilities. VMware's advice is remove this plugin apparently still a problem. So they today released another knowledge base article again with instructions on how to remove it and stating that removing will be the only protection against these two outstanding vulnerabilities. And then we have an interesting paper by researchers from the University of Florida. Uh, this paper it describes an attack that they're calling Vault Schemer. Sort of interesting. I don't think it's really a huge risk, uh, but uh, something that's probably going to be discussed a lot. So I want to mention it here. The threat here is if you are using wireless charging and you're plugging your wireless charger into a power supply that is controlled by the attacker. So one a big thing here that makes it sort of interesting is that this is a victim supplied wireless charger. By modulating the power supplied by the power supply 
to the wireless charger, the attacker is able to influence the high frequency signal being sent by the charger to the device, usually a mobile phone. And there's a number of bad things that can happen. Probably the simplest one here is a denial of service where the uh, wireless signal is then causing the mobile device to overheat. But there are apparently also some sort of more interesting effects, like for example, the injection of rogue voice commands. The trick here is that of course the microphone is essentially an electromagnetic device and by modifying the high frequency field, they're able to induce signals into the microphone that will be interpreted as voice signals and can then be interpreted as a voice command. I think the real sort of takeaway here is to make sure that if your phone is locked, it does not accept any voice commands that's usually configurable in phones. The overheating and such, yes, there is a possible threat here, but then again, an attacker who is able to sort of deploy a rogue power supply somewhere, they could probably also just uh, basically deploy a rogue uh, signal emitter that uh, would basically send uh, some damaging high frequency signal. So don't really think that the threat adds that much really uh, to sort of what's, uh, what's possible. Well, anyway, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.